Is it live yet? Are we live? Amen. Hello, everybody. This is Bob Toronto. Glad to have you in the reading room tonight. And uh, I'm really expecting to uh, hear great things from God tonight. And I'm just believing that uh, the word's going to come alive to us and that we are going to be blessed by it and learn of the Lord and our, our place in God's plan. Hallelujah. Uh, so I'm so glad to have you with us tonight. And um, Bobby Jean is still up in Michigan. She'll be back October the 4th. So be looking forward to having her back down here in Tennessee. But I'm so glad that she's been able to visit her children and great-grandchildren and great-grandchildren and uh, be able to minister at the church for a few Sundays. I know they all appreciate that so much. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm happy that she's had this time with them. Um, but I'll be anxious by the time that time comes for her to get back on down here. Uh, we want to pray before we start tonight and ask God's blessings upon us. So please join in with me wherever you're at, and let's uh, ask for the blessings of the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord of spirits, and we thank you for your wonderful Holy Spirit that moves within us and upon us and causes us to know truth. Oh God, we're asking you tonight to reveal your word to us. We ask you tonight, Lord, that your word will minister to us and that it will teach us the ways of the Lord. We're asking you, Father, that you will open up our heart unto this word, and that, O oh God, we will be able uh, to flow in it in our lives, that it wouldn't just be uh, a word that we read, but that, Father, it would be assimilated and incorporated within our lives, so that we are the walking, living word to this world. And so, Father, teach us your ways. Teach us your paths, Lord. As the path is pointed out to us, may we walk within it without any division or strife. May we walk in the peace of God uh, and the peace of men. So, Father, tonight I'm praying for everyone listening to me. And, Lord, I'm asking you to anoint their ears to hear what the Spirit would say to the church. I'm asking you, Father, that each and every one will be blessed tonight and that, oh God, afterwards they will say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm praying for our bodies, oh Lord, every cell and every atom to hear the word of the Lord and be healed and be made whole and be restored in the name of Jesus. May healing rivers of living water go out from us tonight into each and every uh, temple. And may God, may you bring forth a great healing throughout the land, Lord. So many are in desperate need tonight, O oh God. And I'm asking you, Lord, for your mercy to be shed upon them. And that, O oh God, through our our uh, position with you as your, as your sons, Lord, we're asking you, Father, to go ahead of us and to heal the bodies, to heal the mind, to heal, oh God, the emotions, and that, Lord, your people would be able to walk whole again with their God, hallelujah, in the earth, Lord, as, as their God, as their Lord, hallelujah. For your scripture says that, he, that in this world, as he is in this world, so shall we be, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm asking you, Father, that we will take on the characteristics of Jesus. You are example, Lord. You are our prototype. Hallelujah. And make us like you, Lord. Take all wrath and all uh, uh, hatred and all jealousy and all uh, envy out of us, Lord. Let it not be found in us at all. Hallelujah. And may we walk uh, uh, as the children of God. And may we be able to love those who, who hate us. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. May we, may we be able to heal uh, our enemies. May we be able to minister to those that despitefully use us, Lord. And God, we're going to thank you for that, that your word makes us free. Hallelujah. That as we minister your word in spirit and in truth, that Lord, the captives are all going free. Hallelujah. Every one of them are going to be set free and, and, uh, uh, and they are going to walk in the ways of their God. Hallelujah. 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 So tonight, Lord, may your word be ministered in truth and in spirit and may your people receive it in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Excuse me, uh, I need coffee. <laughs> I had gone today and ministered a uh, funeral, uh, and, and I don't like doing funerals, uh, just in general. Um, I don't know. I, I, in some way, I don't like it. In other ways, I'm glad that I'm given an opportunity to minister about Jesus and to minister to those that don't know Jesus uh, and to let them know where the departed has gone to and the presence of God that they're in. Uh, but today was for a friend of mine, uh, Tom Dodson. Uh, some of you may have been here in meetings and heard about him or maybe even met him. I don't know. Uh, but Tom was one of a kind and he wasn't a religious man. And uh, I, I, in fact, I told them at the funeral home, uh, he had uh, a um, uh, interesting way of communicating sometimes with his language. <laughs> but uh, he didn't uh, really mean anything hateful in his language. He grew up in rough uh, in a rough place. Uh, everybody talked rough. Uh, he worked uh, in places where everybody talked rough, and so Tom talked rough, and it just became a way of talking to him. So some people got shocked by him sometimes when they'd first meet him. Uh, but with me, I I hate people not being real. And I grew up in a factory. I, I worked in factories. Uh, my my uh, uh, friends all used bad language, and I did before I got saved. I had a terrible mouth and uh, didn't care who I used it around either. But when Jesus uh, revealed himself to me, uh, that was the first thing I knew of that God was going to uh, deliver me from was language. Because when I came out of the church, right after being saved, I came out of the church and two guys across the road said something bad. And so I said something bad at them. And I turned to Bobby Jean and I said, did I lose what I just got? And she said, no. She said, uh, ask for God's forgiveness and he'll help you not to do it. And that's what happened. Uh, God took that out of me. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm going to miss Tom, but he was in a nursing home. And uh, he, uh, you know how it is when your loved one's in the nursing home, all they want to do, they, they, they ask you repeatedly, can I go home now? Can you take me home? I'm ready to go home. And of course, Tom did that. And I, I, I said at the funeral home, uh, thank you, Lord, that Tom wanted to go home. And now, Lord, you, you took him home. Uh, to his uh, uh, eternal home, hallelujah, in the Lord, in the presence of God. Uh, and so Tom will be listening in and being uh, healed and restored and made alive, hallelujah. Just as all of our loved ones that have passed on are hearing from this side of the river the good news of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and they are being ministered to 
in, in the place they are at. Hallelujah. And they are progressing toward becoming one with Jesus Christ along with us. Amen. Don't you want to be one with the Lord? Hallelujah. In everything, praise God. And we are, we are becoming that. We're not there yet, but we are becoming one with our God. And I'm so thankful for that. Okay. And that's why I need coffee, coffee, coffee. Okay. Uh, it looks like we are in the uh, getting into the twentieth verse. I'm going to go back, uh, maybe two uh, two verses to the eighteenth, nineteenth, and then to the twentieth, and I'll I'll just read the bold part of the Greek rendering, and it says, uh, and this is I am reading from Jonathan Mitchell's New Testament Greek rendering. If you want it and you want to read along with me at your house or wherever you're viewing this at, you can order it on Amazon uh, under Jonathan Mitchell, and it will be his New Testament Greek rendering. You can either get it as a book or you can uh, download it uh, into uh, your Kindle. And if you have a Windows uh, computer, you can download the Kindle app that will allow you to read it on your uh, on your Windows computer. You can get, download it onto your iPad or or whatever pad, and you can download it to your phone if you choose to. Or uh, if you're like me, a lot of times you want to hold the book. <laughs> I don't know why. I just love holding the book. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in this instance, it's great to have it. In my computer. So it says uh, in the 18th verse, to this end, may you folks be fully powerful and thus act out of strength to grasp together with all the set apart folks what is the width and the length and height and depth. Don't we want to know what is the width, the length, the height, and the depth of God and of his truth. Amen. And thus to know, doing that, thus to know and gain insight by intimate experience, intimate experience, the love of, from, and which is Christ Jesus, uh, uh, G Christ that is continuously transcending. I love this language transcending the love of Christ is continuously transcending. And the other Greek renderings on this particular uh, phrase is overshooting, being thrown over and beyond surpassing. I'll tell you, sometimes in God, I have felt like God just picked me up and threw me out there. Uh, and, and I had to I had to really learn quick. You know, when Charlotte and I first started ministering the kingdom word, we didn't know anybody that preached the kingdom word. And uh, the message uh, was revealed to us by, by Christ. And um, we started making folks mad because we would go and minister what the Lord showed us and they'd get mad at us because it wasn't uh, the church per se doctrine. And uh, then we started meeting other kingdom uh, people. And we realized that God had just put us out there and we had to learn as we went. And sometimes that's what we have to do, dear ones, is we have to learn as we go. And that does mean you're going to make a mistake. You're going to get involved in things you're not supposed to be involved in. But what we're going to have to do is learn what David, King David said. My heart is as an open book before you, O Lord. And God uh, loved David, loved him, because he had a quick, repenting heart. David did a lot of things wrong. But he always 
bro- his heart broke when he did, and he turned to the Lord and asked for forgiveness. And that's what we need to be in this day because uh, we are uh, being put in a place where nobody's been here before, nobody's done this stuff before, so we have to start getting used to knowing how to depend and trust on the Lord himself. Amen. And thus to know and gain insight by intimate experience, the love of Christ that is continually transcending personal, experiential knowledge and insight so that you folks would be filled unto all the effect of the fullness of God and the result of the filling from God. Or um, the other renderings would say, could be filled up unto the saturation point with the result from the entire contents of God. What this is saying to me is that that you may know intimately and experience intimately the love of Christ that is continuously transcending personal experiential knowledge and insight. In other words, We hold God to what we think he is according to our personal experiential knowledge and insight. We read about him in the scripture and our minds try to wrap themselves about him and we hold him to an image within us of our personal uh, experience and knowledge and insight. But this is... What Paul is writing here is that you folks would be filled unto all the effect of the fullness of God, uh, what you believe, and way more than what you believe. Because God is everything we believe him to be, and much, much more. Hallelujah. Don't you love him tonight? Uh, much more than what we could imagine him to be. So the scripture says, let God be God. Uh, you know, don't, don't let him be what you think he is. Let God be God, who he is. And he will deliver you out of all of your temptations and deliver you out of all of your circumstances. Let God be God. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so that's what we should try to do all the time in our walk in the Lord. Don't be just what I believe you are, God. Be all that you are in my life so that uh, uh, you're not just doing the things that I know you can do, but that I can start to trust you to know that you're doing things behind scenes everywhere that only God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when you get to the uh, bottom line of it all, uh, God operates in the impossibilities. He operates in things that are impossible to do. But that's where God dwells at. That's what God does best. It goes beyond the abilities of men, O Hakarama Mahaya, into his own limitless Uh, and great ability to heal and restore. Hallelujah. Uh, The other renderings did say this, could be filled up under the saturation point with the result from the entire contents of God or another rendering into all God's full extent. Another rendering says, unto all the effects pertaining to God's filling you. Uh, So there's what we believe and then there's what God is. And that's, I guess, why Paul wrote that, right, was he said, I am uh, crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live not by my own faith, but by the faith of the Son of God. So there's our faith, our belief, and then there's God. 
And that's where we turn our lives over to God. We don't put our own uh, puny stipulations on it uh, because we are being filled up to saturation with the full extent of God's provision. When we take our hands off of it and we just say, here I am, Lord, fill me, use me, teach me, let me be your oracle in the earth. Hallelujah. We just give ourselves over to you, Lord. We just ask you, Father, to saturate us, fill us to overflowing with your substance, almighty God, and let us be more than we could ever, ever imagine with our own minds. And there will we dwell, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Hakaranda. Let it be, Lord, let it be. Thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so now in the 20th verse, it says, but by the one being continuously able, continuously able and powerful to do, to make, to form, to create, to produce above and beyond all things, surpassingly, surpassingly above, over, and beyond things which we are repeatedly asking for ourselves or are normally grasping with the mind, trying to figure him out, trying to intellectually get a hold on what God is or what his provision is or how great is his love or how immense is his salvation, so rich and free. And our mind goes crazy with it because we can't, we can't expand enough to take it all in. Over and beyond things, which we are repeatedly asking for ourselves or are normally grasping with the mind, apprehending, imagining, considering, conceiving, in accord with or down from a corresponding to, and that's what the accord with is, in the sphere of and along the line of the power and ability which is continuously operating, making itself effective, energizing itself, working and developing within us and in union with us. Isn't the Greek fantastic? The language is so powerful. And that's why I'm so glad we have this uh, a reading room because I want you to know that uh, what we know right now about God is so uh, little. Uh, and, and we have to allow the Spirit to expand our consciousness in him so that we can start grasping the love of God, the salvation of Jesus for all men everywhere. That's not something the Adam man relates to. That is for your inner man, your new man. He's the one that can grasp such a love that Jesus would die for everyone that while they were yet sinners, Jesus died for them. While they yet hated him and used his name profanely, Jesus died for them. Hallelujah. And uh, he died for you and I. So, so we need to be able to allow the spirit, the mind of Christ to expand us. And once we do, dear ones, once you can, uh, you can actually see the extent that God's love is for his creation, uh, then you will have known uh, the power of Christ to save the world. 
And and I, I mentioned before, may have been on Sunday, may have been reading room, I can't remember which one, but I had mentioned about the two phases of our redemption and our deliverance. And that is the first phase is that we are reconciled by Christ's love. He reconciled us and he shed his life, his blood on Calvary. And he, on the third day, he arose. Now, the reason why he arose was so that he could fulfill the second phase of that, which is ongoing, progressive. And that is, is that now we will be saved. We have been reconciled and we are being saved. The salvation I'm speaking of and that Paul was speaking of was the salvation of our whole man. Not just the salvation of the soul, but that we might be saved of, of all our being, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, salvation really means the end of all deliverances. He that endures to the end shall be saved. Amen? So that's the reason why I make a distinction between reconciled and being progressively saved. I am changing from the inside out. I don't have to worry about being lost. I don't have to worry about being um, cast into an eternal judgment because I have been reconciled in Christ before the foundations of the world in God. Christ has reconciled me, you, and every creature of God. But now comes the part where we walk it out. We learn the ways of God. We become transfigured. We become uh, to a place of incorruptibility. And in order to get to that place of incorruptibility, we have to be delivered from all that is holding us back, all of our corruption of our Adamic self. And God is doing that for us. Every second of the day, he is working on our behalf and he is changing us, glory to God, every single day. Those of us who are looking for him, those of us who are hungering after him. He is changing us in the sphere that we are walking in with him. Hallelujah. So we thank God for that, don't we? Because that gives us peace over the world. I'm not, I'm not fretting over a world war, uh, three. I'm not fretting about uh, a financial collapse. I'm not fretting about... Uh, uh, whether somebody's going to hit the button for the nuclear bomb or not, uh, because uh, I know God has a plan. God has a plan for creation, and it's not for them to be annihilated. His plan is for his creation to know him, Amen. to know him. Amen. And the word know is a biblical word. It's an intimate knowing. It's a knowing where he is one with you, and you are one with him. Praise God. It's a, what the word that we were mentioning earlier. It's an entwinement, Amen. knowing him. And, uh, you know, my, my fingers and, and my hands, uh, they, uh, they illustrate that. Uh, when I, I can either know my hand this way, where it's just surface to surface, and that's the way every, a lot of people know God, and that's how a lot of people know each other. They don't allow themselves to open up to God or to anybody else. 
And so they remain shut and all they get is a surface relationship, a collision. But if I allow my fingers to open up, then it becomes entwined and one. And it strengthens itself through the members of each hand. They depend and entwine upon each other. So let's not be this in God. Let's be this, hallelujah, entwined. And, and as we do, we will start to know the greatness of God. Hallelujah. So it says here, within us and in union with us, praise his holy name. 21st verse says, by him, to him, for him, in him, with him. I love that one. When <laughs> these, uh, you just don't get by him. You have to go further. And, and I love that about Jonathan Mitchell's uh, rendering is that you can't get by with just by him. No, you got to go to to him. Oh, something else for him. Wow. What else? In him. It, it has to be all right. Nope. With him. <laughs> and it just, it's the language of the scriptures. It's, it's, it's exactly what the scriptures are talking about uh, when it says continuously and constantly and progressively being changed and, and plunging the depths and going to the heights and the wits of his, of his grace for us. So that's why I love that. By him, to him, for him, in him, with him is the glory, the manifestation which calls forth praise. The glory is that is a manifestation which calls forth praise. So when you think of the glory of God, you have to think of it along that line. Glory is a manifestation of God. And, and the scripture says that um, about glory uh, with us, uh, that uh, it's in the Old Testament I was thinking about, uh, that the glory of the Lord is going to fill the tabernacle, the temple. To the point where no man can minister. To the point where our fleshly minds, our religious minds, cannot minister in the presence of it. And God instead writes it on the wall, his word. Writes it on the wall, the tablets of your heart, the tables. And uh, it can't be uttered. It can't be spoken the only thing it can be is known as we are known. Uh, Hebrews lets us know that we're not going to say to every man in this day we're living in, in fact, we're not going to say to every man, know ye the Lord. For everyone will know him from the least to the greatest. Knowing him is not intellectually Knowing him is not getting the right doctrine. Knowing him isn't us trying to prophesy uh, a, a tremendous prophecy that no one's ever spoken before. Knowing him is in the heart. And it is a knowing, as I've described, uh, an intimate knowing of the Lord. Hallelujah. An entwinement with him. So the glory... Uh, and let me catch that, make sure we're, we're in line. By him is the glory, the manifestation, which calls forth praise within the called out community. Now, Paul here is writing to the called out community. Paul is very involved with the community of believers. And he's not set himself apart. He has not set himself apart and said, I'm too holy to fellowship with you. I know too much. And you'll never understand 
because you're of a lesser order. Paul doesn't do that. Paul includes the called out community, the summoned forth congregation, as well as within Christ Jesus. So this is uh, something that, that in the Greek, we get a sense of the ecclesia, which is a membership in Christ, and it includes all that have uh, allowed God to set them apart from other uh, spheres of life. And they have given themselves over unto the Lord completely. So within the called out community, the summoned forth congregation, as well as within Christ Jesus, unto or proceeding into all the generations, births, progenies of the age, of the ages, the most significant or crowning age of all the ages. Make it so. Amen. Amen. For me, that is the seventh age, the age of all ages. In God, the seventh is the completion, and it sums up everything that's gone before it. So for me, we are walking in a seventh day, a seventh age, and it is the age of all the ages. The seventh day is the age that all the ages were pointing toward. And I do believe that we are entering into the blowing of the trumpets of the ages. And we are entering into that place where the seventh trumpet is starting to blow its sound and there is harmony being created. And instead of like the popular thing is, is that there's just one trumpet and it's the seventh one that, and everybody else quit sounding. Like there's a first trumpet, then it ended, and then a second trumpet ended. Third trumpet started and ended. For me, all the trumpets remain sounding in their own glory. Hallelujah. Whatever, whatever glory God gave them. And they're all leading up to a crescendo called the seventh trumpet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it is at that seventh trumpet that the ages start to come together and the world starts to go through a, a change, a worldwide change. And... People, that's the reason why we need to expand ourselves in Christ. We have to see this the way it's stated. We have to be able to see that judgment begins where? At the house of God. Where's salvation going to begin at? At the house of God. And this is all going to happen in a people before it ever happens in the world. The nations will be the last to come into the glory of God. But there is a people, this people of the age of the ages, uh, that are going to receive this glory and it's going to be around the world. There are different ones that are going to have the uh, parousia. And it is going to cause them to be caught away in Christ to a spiritual reality in him. Uh, and, and that is the harp. They're going to be harpazoed, caught, snatched but not in the air, not in a rapture through the altitudes or 
of the earth, the atmospheres, they're going to be caught, snatched away into the fullness of Christ. Glory. Glory. And then from them is going to come forth the trumpets. And as they sound the, seventh, the seven trumpets, uh, the nations uh, will come to their rising, as it says in the Old Testament. Uh, kings will come to your rising. And, and as it said in Hebrews, they're not going to say every man know the Lord. Do you know the Lord? Everyone is going to know the Lord. Because every man and woman and child alive today, within them, in a place that they cannot grasp or know, they already know the Lord. They heard it back in the Elohim. I know some of you may think I'm talking crazy now, but that's okay. Put it on the shelf, but back in the Elohim, the plurality of God, uh, you and I heard our Father's voice, glory. And we have not heard that voice since. And we won't hear it until a people become one Amen. with the Lord. And when they become one with the Lord and with each other, yes. that's the hardest part. When they become one with the Lord and his people, there will come forth a sound that is the voice of the resurrection, yes. the voice of God. And it will sound itself through all of the earth. Hallelujah. So that's the reason why we need to read this kind of reading. And now when I'm reading to you and plus on your own. And re remind, remind yourself uh, what this means for us. This is not for a handful of people this is something that is for the whole called out community, the summoned forth congregation. There's so many more than I know of. There's so many more uh, that, that um, my spirit tells me there is. And so we, we just have to know that we're not the only ones that are being brought into this place. I'll tell you, there are some brothers and sisters in the in Africa, uh, and and in uh, the Philippines, and in India, and all over the world that I have uh, heard from, that are right with us in our walk in the Lord, and and they are very advanced in the kingdom message. And uh, I, I wish we could get away from this. Uh, well, we're Americans and, you know, nobody else can have God like we have him because we're Americans. Uh, that is such a, a boulder dash. Is that the right word for that? Boulder dash. Um, out of every race, out of every creed, out of every culture, Christ is calling out a, a people. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, let's start the fourth chapter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 1. I myself, the prisoner or bound one, captive within and in union with the Lord. Aren't you, aren't you so amazed that Paul would call himself a slave in Romans 1.1, 1, 1, and that Jesus is his master. And then here, for another example, I myself, the prisoner, or bound one, captive, within and in union with the Lord, Christ, or Yahweh. 
Now, don't get all technical on me. I know so many people over the years, they would reject that because they said, I'm free, I'm not bound. I'm, I'm free and I'm not coming under any bondage. Even when it's the Lord, they would rather be this free agent that is just floating around out here, not doing anybody any good. But, and, and I just uh, astounds me when I read this because I know people like that right now, right now that would reject this scripture because Paul is saying he's a prisoner. He's bound. He's a captive. Oh no, Jesus made us all free. No, you're bound to Jesus, your master. And you're free to do and to say whatever he wants you to do or say. Hallelujah. Get rid of your pride. Get rid of your arrogance. And understand that Jesus is your Lord. Not your buddy. Not your bro. Not your guy. He is your Lord and your King and your Master. Hallelujah. And once you get your pride out of the way, you'll be glad for all of that because that's all the blessings of God. That means that you are going to be used of the Lord and that you are captive to his will. And his will is to bless you and everyone else with the fullness of his glory. Hallelujah. So there's nothing wrong with those words. It's the fact that it's describing a relationship of total submission to him. And if you're not ready for that, you're not ready for uh, what I'm talking about because... Um, that is what this is made up of. This is an army of the Lord who are one with their commander. Amen. And they, uh, uh, they, uh, their, uh, their meat, their desire is to do the will of him. So uh, that there's always going to be re rebels that will not come under any authority, even the authority of Jesus Christ. And that will be to their detriment as the time goes by. Because we have to, uh, we should anyway, have a desire to be the clay and him be the potter. Hallelujah. Where people get in trouble with is where they try to be the potter. And then they realize, oops, I created a monster. <laughs> Hallelujah. Within and in union with the Lord, I am therefore repeatedly calling you folks, as it were, alongside. Alongside. Come alongside me. Exhorting, admonishing, imploring and entreating you to walk your path. Behave, live your life worthily, pertaining to or in a manner suitable to the value of the calling and invitation in regard to which you folks are called from which you were summoned. Now, that's all that God asks of us, to live your life worthily as it pertains to the calling and invitation in a manner suitable to the value of the calling and invitation in regard to which you folks are called, from which you were summoned. I've always said that uh, this is a summons, like the court issuing a summons for someone to appear before the court. And we have received a summons from God that we must appear before him with an open heart. 
and a willing, uh, willing spirit for him to do what he wants to do. You're called with all lowliness of attitude or humility in frame of mind and gentle kindness with long suffering, forbearance, patience, a long wait before rushing in passion. <laughs> the longer you wait to see your loved one, the more passion is there at the end. That's exactly what's going to happen October the 4th. <laughs> glory. Hallelujah. When I see my wife, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, forbearance, patience, a long wait before rushing in passion. Continuously holding one another up or bearing with each other with tolerance. Tolerance within the sphere of and in union with love. Unqualified acceptance and the urge toward union. I don't see this in the kingdom yet. I have to be honest. I think we're in a bad shape. I think we're still a living uh, a lot like Adam. And, uh, but I'm not discouraged about it. Well, I am kind of, I am kind of discouraged. But I'm not discouraged to the point where I'm giving up because that is what God wants and that is what God is going to get is his people with all lowliness of attitude and gentle kindness with long suffering continuously holding one another up. Can you imagine a people who are able to flow in that kind of attitude? Yes, amen. And how great and powerful that would be. And this isn't talking to like five or six. Uh, this is talking about a community. So kingdom to me, there's many levels of kingdom message. And there are those that are ministering reconciliation and there are those that are not, will not. There are those that are ministering uh, no rapture and there are others that call themselves kingdom still looking for a rapture. So you have all of this differences in the kingdom message. The spirit is working within us. Amen. And it doesn't go to sleep at night. The spirit is constantly working within us, dealing with us in the deepness of our being bringing down strongholds of pride and arrogance, bringing down haughty thrones and places in us that makes us feel like we're better than everybody else, all those kind of things. The Spirit is dealing with us on all of this. It will not stop dealing until Zion sees eye to eye, until we see Jesus in the temple, hallelujah, until we see him in each other. And hence, we fall in love with each other Amen. because we love him. Yes. And if he's in you, and if he's in me, then that's all that we need to know that we need to be one in the Lord. Not one in doctrine either. Not my view taking over your view or your doctrine taking over my doctrine. We have to drop it. Yes. Shed it off of us. You, and let there be within us the only doctrine we need is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 
people try to splice things up and cut them apart and diagnose them and, and fiddle around with them and move pieces around and they just ruin it through all of that and uh, analyzing and all of that. What do they mean by that? Just what did they mean when they said this? What did they mean when they said that? Must be against me. And so all of that dicing and slicing that takes place has got to come to an end as we fall in love with God and with his body. Amen. And so let us uh, make a vow before the Lord that we are going to do our best to allow that to happen. Yes. Let us throw aside all, all of our misgivings and uh, all, all misinformation, uh, let's throw aside uh, all of those things that cause us to be so easily uh, beset and so easily offended and let us be able to let each one grow in the Lord according to the order that God has them in. And as long as your eye is focused on Jesus, then let everybody do as the Lord has them doing. Uh, now, having said that, we will stand for the right. We will stand for the truth. And when necessary, we will let our voice be heard to, for, the, for the sheep, the little ones so that they are not led astray. Uh, and so uh, uh, with that exception, let us go on to know the Lord and to walk humbly before God Amen. and to walk together yes. and not as separate. Amen. That is the will of God yes, it is. concerning you and I. Yes, Lord. And as you pray for me, I pray for you. Amen. Amen. And may God be glorified. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to stop here and let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word that is so rich with your plan of salvation. We thank you for Paul, the apostle, who was so faithful in writing these words for us that he saw, I'm sure, in his spirit a people in the ages to come that would read his writings and be able to see Jesus high and lifted up and his train filling the temple. Lord, I thank you for Brother Paul. Yes. And I thank you for each and every one under the sound of my voice tonight that are hearing his words written 2,000 years ago for us. And Lord, I ask you, God, that it will, your kingdom and your word will grow in the earth and that all men everywhere may come to know you as their one true God, as their love of their life. And Father, I ask you, Lord, to help each and every one of us to be better than what we are now, to be more forgiving, to be more accepting, to be able to walk amongst men and women with, without thrusting and without uh, doing harm to each other. And Father, I pray that you will bring this about as only you can do it because you, Lord, uh, are able to speak into every heart and bring it to pass. I love you, Jesus, and I love your people. And I love what you're doing in us, Lord. I love that you're speaking to us. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us by your word and by your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That we can have fellowship with you. And so, Lord, just bless everyone. And I ask you to heal and restore each and every one to prosper them. May they be in good health. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. All right, God bless you. 
And uh, I'll be seeing you uh, Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. right here live on Facebook, 10.30 Central Time, okay? God bless you. God be with you. And may you be filled with the good things of your God. Amen.